Good Morning Indiana is sponsored by Armor Air. From Indie Streaming News Leader, this is Good Morning Indiana, streaming now. A car slams into a home on Indy's southwest side and a notable restaurant goes up in flames. Those are two of the developing stories we're tracking on this Tuesday. But first, you may have to scrape some frost off of your vehicle this morning. Right now at 6, Todd's tracking what else you may need to grab as you head out the door on this Tuesday. Todd, good morning to you. What do we need? Get us ready. Yeah, you know, just bundle up a little bit here this morning. Temperatures are chilly, but nothing abnormal for this time of year. So the coat will be required, and that's just about it. Otherwise, uh, it's a pretty quiet day of weather for us here across uh, the area as uh, temperatures here today will be topping off oh eventually up into uh, the 40 degree range you're sitting in uh, the 30s right now in the 20s in some areas 29 in Indy 32 uh, in Bloomington 30 in Kokomo as well as uh, Logansport uh, and your tower camera here is nice and quiet for us as you look off uh, towards the west can't see a whole lot with it being dark out but I can confirm for you with the satellite radar picture uh, that the skies are completely clear there's one little issue that we have out there and then that is a little bit of a breeze and so that's making the temperatures that I just showed you feel uh, just a little bit cooler but otherwise we're in uh, pretty good shape any precipitation as well to our north and it won't impact us here uh, throughout the day today so as I mentioned you just need to bundle up a little bit here this morning with the temperatures combined with a little bit of a breeze out there uh, but we're up to 42 degrees already by time we work our way into the noon hour and then high temperatures here this afternoon will be topping off in the mid to upper 40s across the area and that puts us above normal our normal high temperature this time of year is 42 degrees. So it's an above normal day with sunshine here in the middle of December. Lauren, you can't complain about that. All right, Todd. Well, let's take you outside right now to I-465. We're at Man Road on the southwest side of the loop. You can see that traffic is moving along just fine through that busy construction area. No delays to slow you down. We do have some changes coming to this area by about Friday. So we'll keep you updated on that. But this morning, things are pretty quiet. Our live drive vehicle is on Pendleton Pike right now. We're traveling this morning. We're at the light, you can see, but other than that, traffic on the northeast side of town is traveling up to speed. It is a busy news uh, Tuesday. This morning, firefighters in Vigo County investigating a massive blaze that destroyed a historic steakhouse. You've seen the images right there. The fire started at the Rod and Gun Club. This is in Rosedale just before 10 on Monday night. We're told the restaurant is normally closed on Mondays. Firefighters were able to contain the flames you see there before they reached a second story apartment. Now, no injuries reported. The original steakhouse opened back in 1921 and had a history with gangsters. That first building burned back in the 1970s. The cause of this fire has yet to be determined. And a scary scene playing out overnight for a family on the city's southwest side. Investigators say that a driver crashed into this home along Kentucky Avenue in Ameriplex Parkway. Everyone was able to make it out of the home safely. Officers say they believe the driver was impaired. It's unclear if any charges will be filed. Also new this morning, police investigating a shooting leaving one person injured. Now this happened just before 5 this morning on Folsom Drive. That's near 30th and German Church Road on the city's far east side. It is unclear what led to that gunfire, but officers tell WRTV that the victim was awake and breathing on the way to a local hospital. The time now is 6.03 and this morning there's a desperate push to get the city and state leaders to protect Hoosiers from rising rent rates. Well, Indiana is one of five states without any concrete renters protection laws. This basically means your landlord can increase the price by however much they want. A panel of city leaders and community advocates explained the next steps to fight the housing crisis. They say their priorities to protect tenants include rent, escrow, and anti-gouging protections. Advocates say rents will continue to reach outrageous prices if lawmakers don't act fast. We can change this. I'm definitely a firm believer that we can change the tide and get rid of some of these bad laws that have been passed that um, have led to our housing crisis. Over the last few years, we have spent tens of millions of dollars of the money that we received from the federal government um, for uh, tenant protections. That money, unfortunately, has now run out. Community leaders and fair housing advocates will meet at the State House on January 29th for Housing Advocacy Day in hopes of getting the attention of lawmakers. But today, we do expect to learn about the state of the state's economy. In just a few hours, the Indiana Chamber of Commerce will release its official report card. 
It grades the state on key measurements like health care, housing and business innovation. The chamber will also discuss goals for the state to give more opportunities for Hoosiers to prosper. Well, this morning, new temporary visitor restrictions are now in effect at Riley Hospital for Children. The hospital announced the restrictions are due to an increase in respiratory illnesses. Officials describe the move as proactive and precautionary. Only the parents or guardians of patients plus four identified adults will be allowed to visit. No visitors under the age of 18 will be allowed. That includes siblings. The hospital says these restrictions will remain in place until respiratory illness rates decline. A new study confirms that if patients go off a weight loss drug, they're likely to regain the weight that they've lost. Eli Lilly and company sponsored the trial for its drug Zepbound. Researchers found that 670 overweight adults who took the injectable medication for nine months then half the participants switched to a placebo. The people who continued taking Zepbound dropped about 60 pounds before their weight stabilized. Now, meanwhile, those taking the placebo dropped about 22 pounds. The study's authors say most of those on the placebo would likely continue to regain the weight that they lost. Well, Swifties, listen up. You can buy tickets to a pre eras tour celebration this week. Tickets to the Indiana State Museum's Taygate will go on sale tomorrow, December 13th, and it just happens to be Taylor's birthday. The pre-concert tailgate will happen before each Eras Tour date in Indianapolis. Those are scheduled for November 1st through the 3rd. The tailgate will feature food, cocktails and mocktails, a DJ and local vendors. Tickets to the event will be sold exclusively through the Indiana State Museum's website. Less than 48 hours after competing in the NBA's inaugural in-season tournament championship, the Pacers are back on the regular season grind. The blue and gold traveling to the Motor City for a match with the Pistons. The Pistons have struggled lately, dropping the last nine straight ahead of Monday's match. Well, the visiting Pacers added another game to Detroit's losing streak. The Blue and Gold walked away with 131-123 to win. Uh, tomorrow night, the Pacers head to Milwaukee for a rematch of the in-season tournament semifinals with the Bucks. As always, go Pacers. Now, Boiler Up Purdue is back in the top three in the latest AP college basketball poll. The Boilers moved up to the one spot to three from last week's poll following their win over Alabama. The black and gold take on top-ranked Arizona in the Indy Classic on Saturday at Cambridge Fieldhouse. The match is set for 430. By the way, it also follows in-state matchups between Indiana State and Ball State. The Sycamores have won eight straight and the Cardinals are enjoying their straight three straight wins. Well, this morning, a new effort is underway to help our neighbors experiencing homelessness. Center Township trustee LaDonna Freeman is launching the Faith in a Case on Wheels initiative. She's filling suitcases with essentials like soap, toothpaste, lotion and other items. She says she has a goal to give out 10 suitcases a day to someone experiencing homelessness. I live close to downtown and I see a lot of the homeless out carrying trash bags with their clothes in them. So I would be at a stoplight they would be walking across the street and the bag would break. So I would see how they would lose their items. And God gave me a vision years ago that putting items in a suitcase for, in a suitcase for the homeless would be beneficial to them. So as I became trustee, I, I remember the vision and I'm going to act on it. Well, Freeman says they have a need for gently used suitcases on wheels and essential items to put inside. You can drop off donations at the Julia Carson Government Center on Fall Creek Parkway. A popular teeth straightening company is going out of business. Coming up, the advice company officials have for Hoosiers already using their products. Plus, holiday travel is right around the corner. When you can expect travelers to take to the airports and the highways, Todd. And it's a quiet weather pattern, so if you are traveling for Christmas early, maybe this week, no issues at all. And your temperatures here in central Indiana will be running at or above normal throughout the next five to even 10 days. And our average high is 41, so we'll be above that. It's all coming up in your WRTV Storm Team Forecast. Good morning to Muncie, Monrovia and Markleville. These are the top stories developing right now at 611. In the coming hours, Ukraine's President Zelensky will arrive in Washington, D.C. to hold high stake talks with U.S. officials. He'll head to Capitol Hill first, where he'll privately meet with Senators and House Speaker Mike Johnson. Then he'll head over to the White House to hold talks with President Biden. The visit comes as Congress debates an aid package 
totaling $110 million for both Ukraine and Israel. The U.S. Supreme Court could soon decide if former President Trump can be prosecuted for trying to overturn the 2020 election results. Special Counsel Jack Smith asked the High Court to rule on this matter quickly. Justices say they'll consider that request. They're ordering the former president's legal team to respond to the motion by next Wednesday, December the 20th. A lower court already ruled that the case can go forward, but Mr. Trump planned to appeal, citing presidential immunity. And changes could be coming soon to Google's App Store. On Monday, a California jury ruled against the tech company in a major antitrust case. The jurors concluded that Google's Android App Store has been protected by anti-competitive barriers that have damaged consumers as well as developers. The case is likely to weaken App Store rules. Now to the latest on a pregnant mother's abortion fight in one of the most restricted states in the nation. As ABC's Justin Finch reports, the woman says that her fetus faces a condition with a low survival rate and Doctors warn continuing the pregnancy could jeopardize her health. A new turn in the case of Dallas mother Kate Cox. The 31-year-old at the center of what's believed to be the first case of a pregnant woman seeking court permission for an abortion since the fall of Roe v. Wade. Cox telling ABC News she thought her emergency abortion request would prevail in Texas. And I could see in this case, surely I would qualify for, for that exemption. But her exemption never came. Cox's lawyers say she could not wait any longer, announcing she left the state to legally obtain the procedure. We are really focused on getting Ms. Cox the health care that she needs as quickly as possible. Hours after Cox's attorney's announcement, the all-Republican Texas State Supreme Court unanimously denied her abortion Monday. Ruling her pregnancy risk didn't meet the state's qualifications, including to prevent major bodily harm or save the life of the mother. This doctor slamming that decision. They clearly want to continue to be able to control people's lives instead of allowing physicians to make the medical decisions that make be the best sense for them and their patients. Cox says her doctors told her her fetus's trisomy 18 diagnosis meant little chance for survival. And at more than 20 weeks pregnant, doctors caution continuing to carry could endanger her health and even risk future fertility for the mother of two. Cox initially granted permission to get an abortion. I am going to grant the temporary restraining order. Then Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton appealed to the Texas Supreme Court, arguing the Cox case didn't meet the medical exception threshold. Cox's attorneys are not revealing where she went to end her pregnancy. A similar abortion challenge is under review in Kentucky State Court. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. A former New York Congressman George Santos now saying that he may take a, take a plea deal with prosecutors as soon as possible. He's set to appear in a federal court today for a status conference hearing with federal prosecutors. Santo faces 23 federal charges, including misusing campaign funds and lying about his finances on his House Disclosure Fort reports. He's pled not guilty already. As of now, Santos is scheduled for a trial in September of next year. Now, Santos told a New York City interviewer recently, on Sunday to be in fact, that he was open to a plea deal and added that he was afraid of going to jail and wants to avoid it. At 6.15, the U.S. Air Force has disciplined 15 people connected to leaking government secrets online. The Air Force's investigation found that some of Jack Teixeira's superiors knew about his intelligence-seeking behaviors. But investigators say they intentionally did not report their concerns, fearing security officials may overreact. Well, 15 people from the ranks of Staff Sergeant to Colonel were disciplined. Teixeira was a cyber systems journeyman with the Massachusetts Air National Guard. He's been in indicted on six counts of transmission class, transmitting classified information, he pleaded not guilty. The United Auto Workers Union has filed unfair labor charges against three major vehicle companies. The organization accuses Honda, Hyundai and Volkswagen of union busting. Officials at the UAW say management at some factories has threatened or harassed workers who are attempting to join the union. Officials also allege that managers are destroying or banning pro-union materials. Honda, Hyundai, and Volkswagen.
deny those claims. Well, this holiday travel season is expected to be a busy one. AAA expects more than 115 million Americans to travel at least 50 miles or more from home. That's a 2.2% increase from last year. The busy travel period starts the weekend before Christmas and lasts through New Year's Day. Most people are expected to drive to their de destinations to avoid the heavy traffic, though. AAA says it's best to hit the road on Christmas Day. Looking like Christmas out there, Todd, in Carmel, though, this morning. So, and it feels like it, too, in yeah, the air. Yeah, you know, it's cold out there this morning. We're in the 20s and 30s. It could be worse, uh, obviously, uh, in the middle of December. But our temperatures are actually pretty seasonable here this morning. But uh, here is Carmel, all lit up still uh, in the Chris Kindle mark. Uh, reopens uh, for the day tomorrow. It's cold on Mondays and uh, Tuesdays. But still, uh, very festive uh, looking right along the moon on there. 29, this current temperature in Indy feels like 22. Uh, winds are out of the southwest and the southwesterly winds are going to help us out today. Yesterday we had the northwesterly winds that kept our temperatures down into the 30s. The southerly winds will help to bring us up into the 40s and for some of you even into the 50s. Now you see the wind speeds here and it's going to be a little breezy throughout the day today, but that's really the only uh, little hiccup that we have in the forecast for the day today is a bit of a breeze. Otherwise we have sunshine and later on this afternoon we'll have above normal temperatures. Right now though it is chilly 32 in Bloomington. It's 30 in Lafayette as well as Monticello 30 in Anderson and 25 right now in Bedford. A little bit of a wind chill getting factored in. 21 is the real feel in Peru. 26 is what it feels like in uh, Richmond and 25 is what it feels like down uh, in Monroe County. But the skies are clear and we'll have sunshine right away this morning. So grab the sunglasses as you walk out the door. You'll need them uh, throughout the entire day today. Any precipitation as well to our north uh, there in the UP of Michigan. And that's exactly where that stays throughout the day today. And today's going to be a really nice afternoon for us. Just a little breezy at times. 42 by the noon hour. That's already higher than our uh, high temperature yesterday. And then we'll continue into the mid 40s in a lot of locations this evening. Uh, nice and pleasant under clear skies. Temperatures will drop from the 30s uh, down into the 20s and then low temperatures as you wake up tomorrow morning. A little colder than today. We're back down into the mid 20s in a lot of locations and then high temperatures tomorrow will be a little bit cooler than today as well. And that's due to a little more in the way of cloud cloud cover tomorrow. There's so skies today are mostly sunny tomorrow, partly cloudy temperatures climbing up into the low 40s later on this afternoon uh, or tomorrow afternoon rather. And here's a little bit of that cloud cover that comes through. So while we deal with some cloud cover, what you don't see out there is any precipitation. We are going to remain dry throughout uh, the extended uh, period and our temperatures are going to remain above average as well. Uh, the new outlook from the Climate Prediction Center came out and this takes us all the way through uh, Christmas Day and look at almost the entire country is going to be dealing with above normal temperatures. It looks like as we work our way towards the Christmas holiday, not good news uh, here in central Indiana. If you're hoping for a white Christmas, uh, does not look like that is going to happen here this year. Here are your temperatures though over the next seven days, highs in the 40s and in 50s. All those temperatures are either at or above normal. Low temperatures, a little cooler though. Several mornings in a row the next couple of mornings, Lauren, with temperatures that'll be in the 20s. All right, well, let's take you up here to I-465. We're moving northbound approaching I-69. A lot of construction in this area this week as part of that clear path construction project at the 465 I-69 interchange. A lot of work going on this week, especially near Allisonville Road. So just be aware of that. As you're moving out and about this morning, we'll have some ramp restrictions throughout the week. Right now, traffic is traveling up to speed. The U.S. Supreme Court dismissed several cases on federal government COVID vaccine mandates on Monday. Those cases were filed against a pandemic-era mandate requiring government work to get vaccinated. In two of those cases, lower courts ruled against challengers to the mandate. In one, a lower court ruled in favor. The Biden administration rescinded vaccine requirements for federal workers back in May. The justices determined that the, that makes the cases moot. Well, a popular teeth straightening company is going out of business. Smile Direct Club says it's shutting down. It comes just months after the company filed for bankruptcy protection. The abrupt closure leaving existing customers in limbo. Treatment services are no longer available and customer care support has also ended. The company is urging con customers to visit a local dentist for further treatment. Uh, thousands of people panicked when Amazon changed their shipping address over the weekend. Coming up, the reason behind that change and, it, and why you should be concerned. Plus, a family continues to push for answers 11 years after a woman's death. We're live at 630 with how loved ones are remembering her and the message they want you to hear. At 621, we'll be right back.
College basketball is in full swing right now, and he got a chance to see two exciting matchups this weekend. On Saturday, third-ranked Purdue and top-ranked Arizona will face off in the Indy Classic. The doubleheader will also feature Ball State and Indiana State, so we want to send you and three of your friends to see the games. All you have to do right now is be the sixth caller. The number to dial is on your screen, 317-269-1459. Good luck. Enjoy those games. We also want to thank you at home and all of you, our partners, for a wonderful, all the wonderful donations during the WRTV Toy Drive. So it's always incredible to see the outpouring of support that we get each and every year filling those boxes. This holiday season, all local Indiana members credit union locations collected new toys for our toy drive. On Monday, all those goodies were loaded into a trailer to be delivered to an organization that's going to make sure that the toys go to kids who really need them. The credit union members and the workers in those locations pitched in extra to make their collection drive a success. They all really enjoy giving back. It's, it's great to see them be so generous and the donations that they've given. We've been able to donate hundreds of toys. It's bonding. Uh, they all get together. They A lot of them will even pitch in their money at the branches to buy some extra toys. Um, just being able to do it together as a group to give back. Well, we want to thank the Indiana Members Credit Union and everyone who donated toys for your role in helping give kids a great Christmas. But listen, you still have a chance to, to show your generosity. Mm -hmm. And Hoosiers, you know how to do that really well. Of course, the season of giving continues. We're collecting monetary donations for this year's toy drive. And you can do that by texting WRTV easily to these numbers. 50155. You could also make a donation by heading to WRTV.com and clicking on the Toy Drive logo. Thank you, by the way, for your generosity. Also, you can get a ticket to Saturday's Indy Fuel Game and take part in the annual Teddy Bear Toss. Bring a new stuffed animal to toss onto the ice when the fuel scores its first goal. Those teddy bears will be collected and the WRTV Toy Drive will donate them to local kids in need. That so. is one event that I want to do. I've done a lot of events, okay. as you know, I do a lot of <laughs> yeah. traveling. I want to see that in person. I want to be, I be smack with teddy bears. Yeah, yeah. You, know, for a you good should. Call. You should. Well, what are you doing humble. Saturday? <laughs> yeah. I have two. I have, I'm in the Nutcracker. Oh. Uh, so he's a party uh, parent. Yeah. yeah so it's, it's for next role. year, uh. fuel. I look forward to being pummeled by teddy bears. Yeah. For a good cause. Yeah. It, it is a fun event. <laughs> it, it, it looks fun. You know, yeah. when they collect them all, you should see the you know the pile. They've been here in the station last mm -hmm. year. I was at the state fairgrounds uh, helping load the trucks up. So uh, it's a great event. Yeah. So next year, next year, next year. I'm in. Yeah, I'm in. You have to make face mask and all. Fuel games are always fun. Throw me those no bears. Come on. So, <laughs> all right, outside right now, uh, we're dealing with temperatures uh, that are chilly. We're in the 20s and 30s. Bundle up a little bit as you get going, uh, but no weather related issues. No precipitation out there. No fog out there. Uh, it's just a quiet morning for us all across the area. And as we go forward throughout the day today, we'll enjoy lots of sunshine throughout the entire day today. So unlike yesterday, when we started off with a little bit of cloud cover and then got into the sunshine, uh, uh, today we have the sunny skies right off the bat as soon as the sun comes up, which is a little after 730 now this time of year. Uh, 42 already by the noon hour. That's warmer than yesterday. 41 is our actual normal high temperature for this time of year. So we get to that number already by the noon hour. And then we'll continue to warm with the sunshine in the afternoon hours to high temperatures anywhere between about 45 and 50 degrees. Raphael. TK, thanks for that. Some Amazon customers got quite a scare over the weekend when they noticed different shipping addresses on their accounts. This morning, John Matteries looked into concerns about possible hacking, so of course you don't waste your money. Amazon customers across the country are looking at their accounts this week and wondering if they were hacked. Suddenly, some Amazon lockers they never used are showing up as a preferred shipping address. If you look at your Amazon account, you can see your favorite shipping addresses. But in the past few days, many customers have been finding other addresses in there for Amazon hub lockers that they have never used. Beth Luckett saw them and didn't know if her account had been hacked or if Amazon had just added these as a new option. It seemed like I had a hub listed for my five most recent addresses that I'd sent stuff to. And I know just enough about computers to uh, be dangerous. So I figured it was something I did, but apparently not. Beth eventually learned that Amazon has been adding locker locations to accounts as a convenience, giving other options for holiday pickup. So the bottom line is your account was not hacked, despite some claims on social media. If you don't like seeing Amazon lockers in your dress list, you can delete them and that way you don't waste your money. I'm John Matteries. Good morning, Indiana. Right now on Good Morning, Indiana.
Here's your Tuesday news feed. A man accused of killing a mother of three kids in Indianapolis is set to appear in court. Court records allege Timothy Gardner shot and killed Alexis Ford. Police say this happened in August of 2022 on the city's northeast side near 82nd Street and I-69. Court documents allege that there was blood on Gardner's hands when he was detained. Police also recovered two handguns from a nearby parking lot. Court records show blood was also found on those guns. A jury trial for this case is scheduled for next week. A firefighter is investigating a garage fire. This on the city's southwest side. It happened just before 3 this morning on Mars Hill Street, just north of Troy Avenue. No one was injured, but crews say there was significant damage to the building. Crews were able to prevent that fire from spreading to other buildings nearby. This morning, the Labor Department will release the latest report on inflation. It's expected to show that businesses kept prices the same for a second straight month. Economists believe that a drop in gas prices may have to offset a rise in food costs. The report could factor into the Federal Reserve's decision to raise interest rates again. But here at 630, I want to thank you for joining us on Good Morning Indiana. I'm Lauren Casey. I'm Rafael Sanchez. Todd Clausen getting you ready for a beautiful Tuesday here in 317-812-765. <laughs> oh, man, you got them all down, Pat. 219. Uh, there you go. <laughs> North, <laughs> get Northeast Indiana. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, uh, it is going to be nice anywhere you go, no matter what your area code or your zip code is for uh, that matter. Can you rattle off all the zip codes here in central Indiana? No, give me, give me, well, I, I producer, producer Carl would not be happy with that. Let's just keep going on. All right, that would take us a little too long. Yeah. Uh, temperatures here in central Indiana this morning sitting in the 20s and the 30s across uh, the area. Obviously, with temperatures this cold, you need the jacket, but that's going to be the case here uh, as we go through the winter months. So you don't really need me to tell you that. 27 in uh, Crawfordsville as well as Columbus. 31 right now in Kokomo. 30 in Avon. And 29 is the current temperature in Castleton. New Pal, you're one of our cooler spots uh, right now at 26 degrees. But here's the view from IMS of our beautiful uh, city skyline uh, with the cool temperatures and the clear skies. A nice crystal clear shot here as you look from IMS uh, back off uh, towards the east. And as we go forward throughout the day today, it'll be hard pressed to find any cloud cover. It's a mostly sunny day for us from start to finish. A few fair weather clouds maybe drift in here later on this afternoon, but all the precipitation stays well to our west or up to our north. And so enjoy the sunny skies today and temperatures that'll be above normal. We'll get all the way in to the mid 40s and some of you in southern locations today could top about 50 degrees making it a very pleasant and an above normal afternoon more on your extended forecast coming up in just a couple minutes all right well we are monitoring a traffic alert Todd, near the downtown area as you're traveling northbound on i-65 heading past the north split we do have this crash cleanup blocking the right lanes as you can see traffic slowly getting by in the two left lanes at this hour no word on any injuries but this is something we'll continue to keep our eyes on this morning as it could slow down your commute in downtown Downtown. Live drive this morning up on I-69. We're near Campus Parkway or traffic is traveling up to speed, so no issues in Hamilton County. We'll continue to keep you updated though throughout the morning. Now let's take you west of downtown ND this morning. Firefighters in Vico County investigating this a massive blaze that destroyed a historic steakhouse. The fire started at the Rod and Gun at the Rod and Gun Club in Rosedale just before 10 Monday night. We're told the restaurant is normally closed on Mondays. Firefighters were able to contain those flames before they reached a second story apartment. No injuries reported. The original steakhouse opened back in 1921 and had a history with gangsters. That first building, by the way, burned in the 1970s. The cause of this fire has not been determined. A scary scene playing out overnight for a family on the city's southwest side. Investigators say a driver crashed into this home on Kentucky Avenue and Ameriplex Parkway. Everyone in the home made it out safely. Officers say they believe the driver was impaired. It's unclear if any charges will be filed. The time I was 6.33 and this morning marks 11 years since an Indianapolis woman was shot and killed along the White River. And this morning, police are still looking for who killed, killed Sharice Walker Bingham. Every year, her family makes it a point to share the story of her life and her tragic death. WRTV's Nico Panisi is live now with what they want you to know. Nico, good morning. Good morning. Where I'm standing near the intersection of New York Street and Limestone Street is where Indiana State Police found the body of Sharice Walker Bingham on December 12th, 2012. Now, 11 years later, this has become a sacred space for her family. Reese, or as her family called her, was a loving, caring, and giving person. She was family-oriented and full of energy. The 51-year-old loved her German Shepherd dogs and walked them near the trails near the White River right over here and trained them. Christmas was her ho favorite holiday. It was a time of joy for her. 
She loved to decorate her home and buy holiday themed items from Cracker Barrel. And that's actually what makes the holidays a very bittersweet time for brothers Malcolm and Keith Walker Sr. There's nothing happened. The case is still sitting there. Uh, we just waiting for some uh, individual, uh, some person that has a uh, guilty conscience. Uh, their heart is burdened, knowing that they need to do the right thing, knowing that they know what happened uh, to my sister, why, why was she murdered, who did it. I actually met with Keith Walker Sr. one year ago today on the anniversary of Sharice's death on that 10 year anniversary. Now it's been a year and he says that not much has happened in terms of the case, but this year is particularly tough for him and his brother because their father Leon passed away just two weeks ago. Walker Sr. tells me he'll continue to come back to this location year after year to raise awareness about her death until the person responsible is found. Sharice's husband Eugene Bingham was arrested two years after her death, but the charges were dropped in 2015 due to a lack of evidence. Walker Sr. hopes that whoever killed Sharice or whoever knows something about who killed Sharice will come forward to police and that justice will eventually be served. Reporting live, Nico Panisi, WRTV. Nico, it is 635 and this morning police in Greenwood are searching for those responsible for a deadly shooting of an 18 year old man. Authorities say Ethan David was shot and killed while inside of a car. Yeah, no, police say people living in the area told them they heard gunshots and then they saw two people running from the car. No arrests have been made. Neighbors say in an area like this, violence is concerning. You anticipate to be in a good neighborhood, it's safe and and I think it's it's just a sad reality. Be good to each other, especially with these holidays. You know, be 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 thankful for who you have, and and don't take anything for granted. The shooting marks Greenwood's fourth homicide this year. That deadly shooting investigation there in Johnson County comes as cities across Indiana and the country are searching for solutions to gun violence. Law enforcement, prosecutors, and community leaders from across the country will gather again today for a federal summit looking at ways to reduce violence. U.S. Attorney General Merrick Garland, who you see there, introduced the violent crime reduction map on Monday at the summit. It serves as a one-stop shop to help local law enforcement agencies implement and develop strategies to prevent and respond to violent crime. What I would say is that there's always going to be more crime in the community than we can prosecute. So as prosecutors, job number one is always discretion. It's figuring out with the resources that we're given, and we could always use more resources. That map helps connect jurisdictions with information and resources that they need to meet the challenges of reducing violent crimes in their neighborhoods. And even though officials say that violent crime is trending downward, emergency rooms are still being inundated with victims of violent crimes. So one hospital-based program is taking a closer look at the issue, and we've told you before about Prescription for Hope through Eskenazi Health. The program connects patients who suffered a violent injury with tools for a successful recovery. We spoke with Dr. Damaris Ortiz. She's the medical director for the program and an emergency room surgeon. She talked about the strain violent crime puts on the ERs. I do think that because it happens so frequently, it's something that we're unfortunately used to. And so there is that level of here we go again. Um, and it's not as uh, surprising. Well, there have been more than 200 homicides in Indianapolis for the fourth year in a row. Prescription for Hope started back in 2009. Uh, still to come on this Tuesday, scammers are checking their list and hoping to get your money any way they can this holiday season. The new way they're targeting you before you step out of that store. And you have a student set to start college in the fall. Coming up, the changes to an important financial aid document that you need to know about. It's 638. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Good Morning Indiana. Parents and college-bound teens, please, please <laughs> listen up. Yeah, some big changes are coming to the Federal Application for Federal Student Aid, or FAFSA, as you've heard. We spoke with Randy Stegemoller, owner of Class 101. It's a college planning firm that works with parents and students. Well, he alerted us that the timeline for filing the FAFSA much shorter than previous oh. years. So listen up. Families used to be able to apply starting like October 1st, and now you have to wait until basically the new year. This includes current seniors who plan to attend college next fall. You do need to file the FAFSA in order to qualify for that financial aid. So we asked Stegel Muller what else families of college-bound students should be doing right now. 
don't wait to the last minute, especially younger students at this point that are thinking in the future that, oh, my senior year is so far away. I don't have to worry about that yet. Um, if you're in high school, you should be thinking about what are my next steps? You know, the freshman, the sophomore should be thinking about what kinds of things are important to me and taking trips to go see different campuses. So to help families file the FAFSA, Class 101 is hosting a free Zoom session. It's tomorrow night at 8 p.m. on their Facebook page. So you can go there, watch that, and get any of your questions answered. Good luck, and don't forget about it. All right, it is 641. Let's check in with Todd on our forecast. Today. Yeah, you know, it's not a bad forecast for us here for the day today. Your high temperatures are going to range anywhere from the lower 40s in northern locations to the lower 50s in Bloomington as well as Columbus. Mid 40s here through the central portion of the state. All these temperatures are above normal. We'll talk about your extended forecast in more detail coming up as Good Morning Indiana continues. This morning, a new warning about scammers targeting you ahead of the holidays. Yeah, so in this latest scam, the crooks heat up envelopes that have gift cards inside, then remove them to remove the card, and then they cut the top of the card off. Yeah, the thieves then put the gift cards back in the envelopes, reseal them, place them back on the store shelves. Crazy. Well, one woman says she bought her husband an Amazon gift card for Christmas, but when they opened the packaging, the card was cut in half small slit in the side of the uh, of the jacket, the Amazon jacket. And what they did was they slid in that small barcode to the other half of card that they had and then put it right over top the gar the actual card that was in their barcode. So then when we scanned it and loaded the money, it actually was put on the gift card that the other scammer had the other half of. Mm, well, police are warning shoppers to be on the lookout this holiday season. They say you should check the size of the card, which should be the same size as a normal credit card, or with the permission of the store, remove it from the holders before completing the sale. So, Todd, if scammers worked this hard at a regular job, <laughs> right? they wouldn't need to scam people. <laughs> they they wouldn't need to be crazy. criminals, right, and crooks. Uh, so, they yeah. go to extreme lengths, I but know. keep especially, that in mind. Yeah, especially during this holiday season. Right. Just be very, very careful. Make sure you don't get... Uh, scammed by somebody all right outside right now we won't scam you with the weather here uh by any means we'll just tell you what it's going to be and for the snow lovers uh you're not going to like this forecast as uh, there's no snow in the forecast if you're not a fan of snow well you're going to like this forecast uh the next week or so here in the middle of december as we deal with above normal temperatures and the week's going to be completely dry even into the middle of next week we're looking at uh dry weather across uh, the area that big storm system from yesterday is now long gone on the east coast good news and here close to home, we're looking at skies that are mainly clear, and that's the way they're going to be throughout almost the entire day today. We'll have sunshine from sunrise to sunset with maybe just a few fair weather clouds building in later on this afternoon, and that is just about it. But you do need to bundle up this morning. Some of you in the 20s, 34 right now is the current temperature in Muncie, and your high temperatures today, they'll be going into the lower 40s here in northern locations, 41 in Logansport, 43 in Frankfurt, as well as Marion. Once you get into the central portion of the state, we're looking at temperatures uh, that'll be about 48 in Indy, 51 in Shelbyville. And then as you continue southward, 50s here in Seymour, in Bloomington, 51 degrees. Same for Spencer. Anytime I think you get into the 50s in December, especially the middle to latter half of the month, uh, you have to consider those kind of some bonus days since our normal high temperature now this time of year is uh, 41 degrees. Now, once the sun sets, which is at 521, your temperatures do cool off pretty quickly back down through the 30s under a clear sky, but a very pleasant and quiet evening for us and then as we look ahead to tomorrow tomorrow there's a little more in the way of cloud cover that'll be around across the area but it's primarily in the morning hours and then more sunshine in the afternoon but it will be a little bit cooler tomorrow still seasonable with a high temperature of 41 degrees now it's a very dry forecast as we look forward in this forecast uh, through December 20th, we should have about three quarters of an inch of rainfall. And as we look at computer models, there's one that's hinting at two hundredths of an inch of some rainfall. Uh, the other one has completely zero rain. So it's a very dry stretch of weather that's going to take us almost up to Christmas. And then even through Christmas, the cold air, which is a lot of the purple and pink colors that you see here on the map. And here's Indianapolis. Uh, you're looking almost straight down on the North Pole right here. All the really, really cold air is just going to stay confined up into Canada. There's one little push of some cooler air that's going to come in here. It looks like maybe around uh, the 17th or 18th of 
uh, December, and it's mainly going to be in the eastern portion of the country. So look for primarily seasonable temperatures for us here across the area with the cold air a lot to the north, and that means your hopes for a white Christmas are probably almost pretty much zero, it looks like here uh, in central Indiana for this year. Here's their next seven days, though. We're looking at lots of sunshine in the coming days and temperatures that'll be above normal in the 40s and 50s. Low temperatures, though, still a little on the chilly side, especially the next three mornings, Lauren, with low temperatures down into the 20s. All right, Todd, we want to take you back here to the north split and that traffic alert we are monitoring with this crash cleanup. We do have one more lane of traffic that has opened up, so that's good news. Now there's three lanes open. Still pretty slow going through that area. This is the northbound direction of I-65 heading through the north split. You can still see we have that right shoulder area blocked off right now, and it's kind of difficult for drivers who are merging from that ramp as well. So just use caution as you move through that area this morning in downtown. Our live drive vehicle this morning is on southbound I-465, hopping on to I-70 westbound. We're over on the east side of town, getting ready to head back and towards downtown. You can see traffic there is traveling up to speed. No delays. So here's something to get you really in the holiday spirit. Lauren can't wait for this interview. Coming up on Good Morning America, mm. Andrea Bocelli and his daughter Virginia are live in Times Square to perform Let It Snow. No Ooh. snow in our forecast. Sorry. No snow no here. Snow. Nope. Well, you do still have time to donate to the WRTV Toy Drive. There's some animated snow to help a child in need this holiday season. Just text WRTV to 50155 or head to WRTV.com. Our top stories are coming up after the break. Right now on Good Morning Indiana. The time now is 6.53 on Good Morning Indiana. Here's the information you need to get out the door by 7. So police are investigating a shooting that left one person injured. This all happened just before 5 this morning on Folsom Drive near 30th and German Church Road. This is on the city's east side. It's unclear what led to the gunfire, but officers tell us the victim was awake and breathing on the way to the hospital. A scary scene playing out overnight for a family on the city's southwest side. Investigators say a driver crashed into this home on Kentucky Avenue at Ameriplex Parkway. Now, everyone in the home made it out safely, which is the good news. Officers say they believe the driver was impaired. It's unclear if any charges will be filed in this case. This morning, firefighters in Vigo County investigating a massive blaze that destroyed a historic steakhouse. The fire started at the Rod and Gun Club in Rosedale just before 10 Monday night. Firefighters were able to contain the flames before they reached a second story apartment. No injuries are reported and the cause of the fire has not been determined. A different fire firefighters are investigating a garage fire, this on the southwest side of Indianapolis. It happened just before 3 this morning on Mars Hill Street, just north of Troy Avenue. Now, no one was injured, but crews say there was significant damage to the building, as you can see from all that smoke. Crews were able to prevent the fire from spreading to other nearby buildings. Well, a man accused of killing a mother of three kids in Indianapolis is set to appear in court. Court records allege Timothy Gardner shot and killed Alexis Ford. Police say this happened in August of 2022 on the city's northeast side near 82nd Street and I-69. Police also recovered two handguns from a nearby parking lot. A jury trial for this case is scheduled for next week. Today we expect to learn the state of the state's economy. In just a few hours, the Indiana Chamber of Commerce will release its official report card. It grades the state on key measurements like health care, housing, and business innovation. The chamber will also discuss goals for the state to give more opportunities for who to prosper. This morning, new temporary visitor restrictions are now in effect at Riley Hospital for Children. The hospital announcing the restrictions are due to an increase in respiratory illnesses. Officials describe the move as proactive and precautionary. Only parents or guardians of patients plus four identified adults will be allowed to visit. No visitors under the age of 18 will be allowed, including siblings. The hospital says these restrictions will be in place until the respiratory illness rates decline. Almost four minutes until seven and the Pacers back to the regular season and grind. The blue and gold traveling to the Motor City for a match with the Pistons. The Pacers adding another game to Detroit's losing streak with a win of 131 to 123. Uh, tomorrow night, the Pacers head to Milwaukee for a rematch of the in-season tournament semifinals 
with the Bucks as always. Go Pacers. And we want to take you here into the downtown area. Keeping a close eye on this traffic alert for drivers moving through the north split on the northbound direction of I-65. The crash was blocking a couple lanes of traffic. More lanes are opening back up as the crash cleanup is kind of moving over into the shoulder there. But it is a tricky area because we do have people merging and moving around lanes here. So just use caution as it is slow going. Got about five minute delay here in the downtown area. So we'll continue to keep a close eye on that and any other issues that could impact your commute on this Tuesday. But let's check in with Todd and our weather for today, Todd. Yeah, you know, nice and quiet for us today. All across uh, the area, we'll enjoy sunshine and temperatures a little chilly this morning, but mm -hmm. we'll warm here nicely throughout the day with that sunshine up to a high of 47 degrees. Slightly cooler tomorrow at 42 and I'm just a little more in the way of cloud cover tomorrow as well, but then back into the mid to upper 40s for Thursday and Friday. We stay right around 50 for the weekend. Saturday, a little more in the way of clouds and sunshine, but still dry. And then we keep the dry weather going all the way into next week. No really, really cold air, uh, but a couple chilly mornings there with temperatures at or below freezing. While we wait for that sun to rise, smile at someone. Make someone's day today. By the way, we are always on by going to WHARTTV.com. That's right. Good Morning America is coming up next. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Have a great day.